In this complete SEO tutorial for beginners, I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do to start ranking your website in Google searches, which is gonna give your business more visibility, and when people are finding you, you're gonna have more customers, clients, and more revenue and profit on the other side. So before I ever got started here on YouTube, my web consulting business relied 100% on being found in Google searches, and I actually was able to rank pretty high for some really competitive keywords, and that traffic was completely responsible for the consistent revenue that I was able to bring into my business. So this stuff I'm gonna show you really works when you do it right. But let's just get right into step one, which is to decide on your keywords. So if you wanna do SEO right, or at all really, you need to base all your work on the keywords or key phrases that you wanna show up for when people search for them. But there's a bit of an art and a science to getting this step dialed in just right. So first of all, you wanna write down some of your best guesses, what you think that your ideal customers are searching for. So this should be a variety of phrases that show uh, buyer intent, right? Things like lawyers in Dallas, as well as questions that show research intent, like do I need a lawyer? So write down all your ideas, then you wanna see which of these terms are gonna be your very best opportunities of actually getting found. So to do that, I actually recommend going to the free online keyword tool called ubersuggest.com, where you can input your phrase ideas, and they're not only gonna give you more ideas, but you'll see how many people are searching for each term per month, and how competitive each of them is too. So the end goal for doing this is to walk away with about three to 10 of your best opportunities balancing out these three criteria. Search volume, right? You obviously need enough people who are actually searching for your phrase for it to be worth your time. Next, SEO difficulty. So Uber Suggest does show you how competitive each phrase is and even color codes them from green being the easiest to kind of an orange color and then red is the hardest. Ideally, you wanna find those sweet spots of really high volume and low difficulty. Also, keeping in mind our third criteria, which is relevance. So Uber suggests is gonna give you all kinds of keyword ideas, but they're only gonna be valuable to you if they're actually relevant to what you're selling. So if they're telling you that lawyer's salary in Dallas is gonna be a slam dunk to be found for, that's great, but does that search at all line up with you closing a client? Probably not, right? That's probably people researching if they wanna become a lawyer, not people in the market to hire one. So you need to weigh out all three criteria and decide on your top three to five keyword phrases that you can get started with. And that segues us right into step two, create a long form page or post for each phrase. And I say page or post because this might be a combination of phrases that have that sales intent, in which case you'd wanna create a sales page or a service page, as well as phrases that have more of that research intent where it would make more sense to create a really good article that answers that question for them. And I love having that combination of content that's designed to attract people who are ready now and attract those people who are, you know, more in the beginning stages who will be ready in the near future. That's how you start to build that runway of future customers or clients. So I know it helps to see examples. So let's just say that you own a house cleaning business in Miami. So when you do your keyword research, you may come back with these top three phrases, house cleaning service Miami, window cleaning Miami, and how much does house cleaning cost? So in this case, you might wanna optimize your homepage for the term house cleaning service Miami, then create a service page that's dedicated to window cleaning as a service, and you'd wanna create an article addressing the question, how much does house cleaning cost? So now let's talk about how exactly you're gonna create those pages and what needs to go into each of them to really stack that deck in your favor to rank as highly as possible. So the first thing you wanna do for each of these key pages is write them as completely and in depth as possible. It's not enough in 2022 to just keyword stuff your pages and just hope and pray that they rank, right? You need to cover your topic 
better than the other listings that would appear in the search results. Some experts even go so far as to say that you need to create a page that's 10 times as good as everybody else's. Not easy to do, but at least it gives you a clear goal of what you should be shooting for. So depending on your level of competition, you wanna write these pages to be at least 1,500 words, but quite possibly two to 3,000 words in some cases. So you really wanna go deep and cover every important aspect of what you're trying to rank for. And of course, within this long form content, you need to include those keyword phrases in some key places, including in the page title and URL. So if you're creating your site on WordPress, you just need to install the Rank Math SEO plugin, and then you can control your page titles and your URL from that really easily. So if you were trying to rank for Window Cleaning Miami, your URL for that page would be something like sunshineclean.com slash window cleaning Miami. So having that, what we call an exact match domain like that is still super powerful when it comes to good solid SEO. So you also want to use your phrase in the top headline on your page, what we call the H1 tag as seen here. Next, you want to use it at least once within the first 100 words of your normal body text on the page, at least once in a secondary H2 or H3 heading. Just think of those as subheadings further down in your page. Um, and you'll also want to include an image that you've uploaded with the exact phrase as the file name. For instance, this photo named windowcleaningmiami.jpg. And then you want to repeat that phrase as the alt text on that photo too. And you can easily change the alt text with that same Rank Math SEO plugin that I brought up before. Now, alt text is just text that you input onto an image that is not gonna be readable by people coming to your site, but it's really just meant to tell Google what the image is about. And finally, if you can, you wanna upload a video to YouTube and then name it with your keyword phrase and then embed that video on the page that you're trying to rank as well. Now, I'm not gonna tell you it doesn't matter what the video is because at the end of the day, people are still coming to your website and the video should do a good job of selling your service. But in terms of SEO value, it doesn't really matter what the content of that video is. It could be you know, a testimonial or an overview of your business or just of a specific service, anything really. And remember here, the name of the game is to show Google that you're covering your topic very thoroughly and completely. And they're smart enough now to know what kinds of words and phrases that a really complete page on your topic should include, which is why you also wanna make sure you're using a lot of you know, related keywords and keyword phrases throughout the page. And honestly, if you did a good job creating that content completely like you should have, those words are probably gonna have made their way in naturally. So in our house cleaning example, I'd probably expect to see words like, you know, dust, vacuum, surfaces, windows, things like that, right? Um, and I also like to get some more ideas by just doing a Google search for your phrase. Then you scroll down to the very bottom of that page where they're gonna have a list of their own variations. So try to work in some of these phrases too where they make sense. Okay, so Google can obviously see the words that you use on your pages, but guess what else they can see and what they probably care about possibly even more than how many times you're using your keywords. They wanna make sure that they're recommending content that people actually wanna see. In other words, you need to make sure you're optimizing your pages for human beings too, because Google can see how many people are clicking on your listing, how far down the page they're getting, how long they're staying, and if they hit the back button to then continue their search elsewhere. So let's just talk about all the things you can do to make your page you know, stickier so that your potential customers like what they see, then Google likes that they like it, and then they keep sending more people your way as a result. So the first thing to do is you wanna start your page with a really clear headline that lets people know that they're in the right place. Don't make them guess what your business does or what your article is about. Okay, then you wanna follow that up by getting right into the good stuff as soon as possible, right? If it's a service or a sales page, let them know the benefits of working with you. If it's an article, 
get right into the actionable content. And if you really wanna keep people engaged, make sure that you're writing like a human being with a viewpoint and actual expertise, right? Because I see this all too often, especially in blog posts that have obviously been farmed out to a writer for hire who's done nothing more than just research and regurgitate the facts. If your pages and posts read like a term paper written by someone who doesn't really know enough about the topic to write about it with even a little bit of personality, they're gonna go back and they're gonna look for something else. Next, design is important too. So if your website looks at all outdated or cramped or chaotic, people are gonna feel overwhelmed and you've lost them. So make sure you're using images, subheadings, short paragraphs with lots of white space and lists where they make sense to use them. Essentially, you're trying to give your content some shape and a flow that keeps them reading further. Because if they come and they just see that giant wall of text with no images and no subheadlines or bullet points, that's just intimidating and people don't want to read it. And I want you to always remember this. People don't read websites, they skim them. So play into that behavior by bolding certain key phrases and using those images to help you say what you want to say in a more visual way. That can mean using infographics to show data visually, or even just using icons to illustrate your benefits, or using photos of your testimonial subjects to help bring them to life and make them more trustworthy. And another really smart way to keep people on your site longer is to use video. And the video possibilities are endless, but you know, for example, you could use a business overview video on your homepage or a testimonial compilation on a service page or even a video version of your article right at the top of that post. And honestly, even if you don't have a video of your own, you could always just find a video on YouTube that someone else made that relates back to your content in some way and then embed that on your page. And in case you're wondering, yes, that's perfectly legal and ethical to do that because that person still gets views on their YouTube account, which is good for them, and you get the benefit of keeping people on your site longer. So you obviously don't wanna do this. You don't wanna show a video from your direct competition. So try to find something that's more neutral, but that still helps you make your point. And I do wanna be clear here. I'm not generally talking about doing this on a sales page. I'm talking more about on a blog post. So if you're writing that article about how much cleaning services cost, and then you find another person's video on YouTube that kind of goes into all the, the elements of how it's priced out, and it fits in line with how you charge, might as well put it on your page and keep people around a little bit longer. Okay, our next important to do is to punch up your actual search listings, specifically the title and description that pops up right here when it comes up in a Google search. So this is super important for a really simple reason. If you can entice more clicks than Google thinks you should statistically be getting in your, based on your ranking position, they're gonna take note of that and reward you with a higher position next time. So. Let's just say you're currently showing up as the 10th result for your keyword on Google. Google thinks, okay, in this position, this listing should be getting clicked on 1% of the time. But if you're able to write your listing just a little bit better than the others, and you manage to get clicked on 2% of the time, you've doubled what Google thought you'd be able to do. So then maybe next time, instead of showing up number 10, maybe you show up number nine, and so on. And the good news is this is super easy to do, and it's 100% under your control. So the trick here is just to sell the click by mentioning you know, unique benefits that you bring, or promising a dramatic transformation, or a tangible result they, they can expect by either working with you, or from the information they're gonna learn in your post. So let's just check out an example of a bad listing versus a good one. So if I were to search house cleaning service Miami, here's the first result I get. It says Miami house cleaning, the cleaning authority, our house cleaning professionals proudly clean homes in Miami, Doral, Halea, they go on to just name all the towns and beyond and then when you call on the dot dot dot. I mean, looking at this, I can tell they're cleaners, but there's literally no reason I'd be inspired to click this listing, right? These words are all pretty cliche at this point. It just doesn't tell me anything that I wanna know. And then they pretty much just lay out the facts 
and the areas that they cover. So this is really limited real estate, so don't waste it with cliches, uh, pure logistics, facts, and locations. So let's compare that with this rewritten version. So I rewrote this to say, Miami house cleaning that outshines the rest. Whether you need a one-time deep clean or weekly service, the cleaning authority makes it simple. Book online and enjoy your newly sparkly clean home as soon as tomorrow. See how this one uses language that's evocative of that, you know, amazing feeling when your house is freshly cleaned. And it also stresses how simple the process is and how soon they can get started. So this rewritten version would likely get many more clicks than the original. So if those two were going head to head, the new version would have a definite chance of overtaking that position one based on click-through rates alone if everything else were equal. And you can easily control this title and description text with that Rank Math SEO plugin. And speaking of plugins, we need to talk about probably my favorite one that can make a huge difference from your page load speed. So how fast your page loads is a major sticking point with both the actual people coming to your website and for Google. So people generally will not wait any longer than three seconds before they give up on your site and Google knows it. So if they can tell that yours takes any longer than that, they're a lot less likely to show it anywhere near the top of search results. So the bad news is there are a ton of ways a website can be slowed down, but the good news is there's one way to speed it up that works way better than anything I've ever tried, and it's the easiest thing ever to do. So if you have a WordPress website, you just wanna add the Nitro Pack plugin, and they're gonna take care of the rest. You do need to get the plugin from their website, and I included my affiliate link in the description below if you wanna get a little bit of a discount, but um, for most of you, the free version is gonna work just fine. That one plugin's gonna handle every aspect of speeding your website up, from compressing your images with pretty much zero loss of quality, I'm telling you, it's really impressive, um, to lazy loading, caching, all that technical stuff that you'll never even need to learn because they just take care of it all for you. Okay, so up till now, we've been focusing completely on everything you can do on your website, but that's only gonna get you so far. So to make SEO really work for you, you need other websites to link to yours. Specifically, I'm talking about getting backlinks from good, reputable websites. Backlinks are really important because they signal to Google that other people around the web think your website is actually good enough to want to link out to it for you know, one reason or another. Think of them as you know, recommendations or votes for you over your competition. And since this is such a big and important topic, let's continue the conversation in the next video in this SEO course by clicking right here. I'm gonna show you all my favorite ways of getting really high quality backlinks without a whole lot of effort. So just click right here and I'll show you everything you need to know.